Today on my channel, I am speaking with the band Titi Zani, the cunning linguists who will be representing Latvia at Eurovision 2022 with their song, <gasps> Eat Your Salad. <laughs> so uh, first off, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Sure, no problem. Uh, we, 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 we love doing interviews because that let us uh, spread the message that we're, that we're participating with. So that's great. I'm very jealous that you're going to be going to Italy, by the way. I've never been to Italy and, uh, you know, I've got a giant House of Gucci poster on my wall and I'm wearing like my father, son and House of Gucci jumpers. For us, it's also very exciting to be going uh, to Italy. Uh, they've never led us outside of Latvia as a group. <laughs> <laughs> We've been separately, but separately we're, we're a lot, uh, we're a lot more behaved <laughs> than we are all together. You have mentioned in some other interviews that a lot of your members have done jazz music and that you're trained musicians, but you've never really elaborated on that, or at least in English that I could find. So can you explain a bit about what your musical training has been uh, before becoming the famous group that you are now? And like, did you learn in school or did you take private lessons or how did you get started? Go so one by one. Good. Yeah, yeah, you start, man. You start. Okay, uh, I started uh, teaching music when I was like, uh, with, it was actually with uh, Tom's, the drummer of, of, of Citizen. How old were we? We were like 12. Teaching or learning? Uh, learning, 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 learning. learning. Okay, we were like uh, 12. I, I, guess. I guess 12, yeah, from, from, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. from 12 this years. This is where we all started, right? We, uh, we started out with the rock music type of school type but uh, of beat, yeah. yeah type of beat but we end up uh learning jazz because it's uh i guess the most that you can get out of music theory i would say it like that yeah. in a way in a way right yeah well what about you Douglas? well for me i started with uh, classical singing in music school when i was nine years old and uh when i was 12 i started playing saxophone and took private lessons and after that uh I went to musical. It's, it's in, in here. It's, it's high school, but uh, yeah, it's I music know. high school. That's high school. Music high school yeah. where I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> music. yeah, right, where I learned jazz music, and uh, yeah, after after that, I was good enough to play in band. <laughs> yeah. Good. So for me, I started uh, studying music when I was, I think, nine years old. I started participating in uh, our local music school. I I played French horn. So I, I graduated school, and after that, uh, we and Yanni started the band, uh, the Citizen Salve. So I kind of uh, made some other like interest activ interesting activities with the local uh, just uh, rock school that's in Riga. I I participated in some lessons for two years, uh, teaching not teaching but studying guitar and. Uh, and also some vocals, but uh, I don't sing that well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, during that period after like 2009, we've been playing together with Yanis. So that process kind of taught me more because I was studying from my own estate. Yeah, I did. Yes, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I started uh, started as a, a academical vocal of opera music. Uh, I did choir conducting and uh, then jazz music. And uh, yeah, it has been a rough ride, but started as a singer, ended up as a producer and bass player. I don't know how, how I did that, but yeah. <laughs> it suits you better, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, well. Yeah, and then uh, my story is such that I know nothing. Uh, I have no idea how music works, but uh, I like observing the environment. And my job is writing lyrics and uh, performing them in a in a simplified manner, so I don't need to know notes, I need to know one, so that I could rap on it. And uh, that's it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they know me. <laughs> you need to know when to start and when to stop. Yeah, <laughs> that's it, that's yeah. Uh, so yeah, but ultimately I guess we're a colorful bunch, both in our experiences and in our education. And uh, that's what makes it interesting that all of us have different backgrounds, even though a lot of it has been intertwined with uh, jazz and with rock and uh, Finally, we ended up in pop music. Yeah. If, if, if we would all be professionals, it wouldn't be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. Following up on some of the things that you said. So, Robert, did I hear you correctly that you said that you studied opera? Yeah, I did, yeah, for three years, yeah. And choir conducting as well. 
Do you have a favorite opera? <laughs> That's why I left opera music. I really don't like opera, but uh, that was very good for uh, vocal stability, like uh, the, the classical manner of singing, uh, the breath and everything. And uh, I got from that, I got like classical training in music, classical harmony, which is uh, based for any arrangement. So I, the most I took from that is basically arrange, arranging a music. Yeah, well, I mean, knowing how to breathe from your diaphragm is important. A lot of pop and rock singers don't know how to do proper breathing techniques. But what do you not like about opera? It's not that I don't like opera. I just, I enjoy pop music. I've, I've enjoyed it for a whole my life. And I tried many different experiences with uh, opera music and like uh, uh, singing a cappella groups. And I did a lot of stuff with singing, but I really enjoy more writing music and producing like pr production as well. Like. Uh, I, I don't know why why is that, but uh, I today we listened to my recordings of me singing uh, Latvian like uh, classical music, and yeah, kind of funny. Fifteen years old, but sounds like fifty. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to ask because my mother's an opera singer, so like that's why as soon as you said opera, I'm like, okay, so what's the tea? Like, what what do you not like about opera? I don't like that a lot of the men tragically. I think it gets repetitive, but that's probably why. My favorite opera is Deflator Mouse because it's not okay. one that ends tragically. It's actually super <laughs> funny. But um, yeah, if you don't know the story for anyone watching this or just you guys that are doing the interview, you should look it up because it's goofy as hell. It's like all about a prank and it's revenge because of a prank. And yeah, it's super funny. But anyway, another follow up question I wanted to ask though, Dagnis, did you always play tenor saxophone or did you start on an alto and then yeah, down? Yeah, I started. I started with alto, but uh, I played alto for like half a year because I was uh, alto was too little for me. He's like <laughs> two meters <laughs> tall, so it might have looked yeah. pretty it, comical. It, it looked <laughs> funny, so my teacher said you need a bigger sax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I started to play that. <laughs> oh, another thing I wanted to add is. Uh, I watched another interview that you did. Um, Giannis, you did not know the word in English for the wooden piece that goes on the mouthpiece of a saxophone. The word you were looking for is reed. So, Thank R -E -E -D. you. <laughs> yeah. Another like interview. Reed. <laughs> reed. <laughs> it's not weird for you to not know that. Like, if it's not really common conversational English. So, it's. It probably also doesn't come up when you're writing lyrics, so it's it's not Just weird. Read. <laughs> Just read. Just read. I will read more. I'll read more. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned in some of the answers that you've already given, and it was something I was going to ask about, that you previously had the name The Citizens LV, and I was going to ask about that because I noticed on your YouTube channel that your older uploads had that written. So I was going to ask a bit about that name and then the name change and why you decided to change and the meaning of the current name of the band the citizen so that was uh sort of like training wheels for me and Reigns primarily uh that was the basis and that's the history and we have been discussing should we remove some of it from from the internet or from our for example older youtube uploads but ultimately what we decided that we shouldn't do it uh, because that's where we come from. Uh, that's that's how we grew up. Everybody has uh, some of those videos that they think that they could have done better, but ultimately that also makes us think about uh, how far we've come already, right? That that the quality has increased, that the, the songwriting since uh, Rob and Douglas joined has increased, uh, has increased in quality. Uh, the same applies for lyrics, and uh, thus we decided why would we take it down? If, if, if it's there, let it stay and let people see that uh, it's not that you land somewhere high immediately, that uh, you start slowly, and uh, I think that stylistically we were different back then, oh, and, yeah. then and then we came to a, to a change, and the change was pretty, pretty simple for us. Uh, the reasoning was simple at the, at the same time complex. Uh, I, I at least perceived all of this as a, kind of a pop music as an age-restrictive thing, there are some exceptions where 40-year-olds uh, uh, make it in, 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 in the particular genre, but for me it felt like it's either now or I should uh, switch more towards what I do professionally outside of music. And uh, so we had the discussion within the band, who wants to go for it? Uh, I mean, who's, who's ready to, to take this to the next level, if you could say, uh, on a cliched way? And uh, then 
many of us split up. Uh, me and Rainis stayed. Krishianis uh, had recently joined us and stayed. Tuoms joined us permanently. And then we found Douglas and Robert. And from that moment, it's it kind of became a completely new thing. And that's why we, uh, you could say rebranded, but realistically, it's a whole new thing. We changed our musical genre. We changed the, the members of the band. Uh, we changed how we write lyrics, how we work on music. Uh, everything about us changed, so it just made sense to switch the name as well. And the, the word Tsitizan, it means other boys. Uh, if you translate it directly. Uh, yeah, you can also say different. Uh, different yeah. boys, uh, yeah. Everything well, changed. It was like puberty for the it was band. Puberty. <laughs> it was a puberty for the band. We did puberty. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fast. But yeah, uh, and, and, and from that moment, the kind of what, where the name stems from is uh, the citizens of the Tsitizani. There are some similarities to it. In Latin, it sounds a little, you know, it's a uh, Tsitizans or Tsitizani. Sounds very uh, familiar. It yeah. sounds familiar and, and, and similar. We did think about changing the name completely, oh, yeah, yeah. but uh, the options weren't that great that we came up with, and then we decided no. that uh, the core of the, the idea of the band stays, that we want to create something uh, professional out of Latvia. Yeah. We want to make uh, globally recognizable pop music from Latvia, which is uh, a pipe dream, really, but uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're going for it with everything that we have. Uh, we're trying our best. I heard you mention in some of the other interviews that you're taking a satirical approach to your lyrics for your songs, which is why I was trying to get a hold of more of the transcripts of your songs. So I could throw them into Google Translate because I was like, okay, what are you oh, writing okay. about? Um, normally I don't do, like I listen to a lot of pop that is in languages that I don't understand, but I normally don't check the lyrics because I don't, I just follow the melody and the production and it doesn't really matter to me what it's saying. But um, a lot of your songs, the lyrics are not available online. I was Googling all over the place. I was looking on lyrics websites and it's not up. So you should just copy and paste them and put them on your, I don't know if you have a website or something or put them in the description box of your, yeah, your YouTube Yeah, uh, that, that's right. something that we haven't done our homework for. I mean, the album, we, we really just released the album, so everything has been uh, on a rocket ship tempo upwards uh, since we released the album. It was only on the 28th of October last year that we released our album, and uh, I don't even know if we have transcribed all of the lyrics. No, 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 no <laughs> Some of them changed while we were, while we were recording them uh, in the yeah, last minute. down and just write them down, right? Yeah, we just have to do it, but ultimately, yeah, ever since uh, November came, uh, it has been a crazy journey for us. Uh, we've been working our butts off, and we're, we've a little bit forgotten to transcribe the lyrics. But yeah, uh, in Latvian, it's pretty much the same, what we did with Eat Your Salad, uh, at least I believe so. The lyricism is similar uh, in the sense that we write songs about simple things with a different twist on it. Uh, for example, our first single was called Always Late, and it literally discusses the fact that I'm always late to things. And uh, we tried discussing it from a funny perspective, that I pulled out too, uh, too late, and now I'm waiting for the, my third son. That's one of the lines in the song in Latvia. It year. sounds better in Latvia. <laughs> <laughs> you should know that. But yeah, uh, yeah, so we're kind of keeping the same trajectory, uh, being quirky, uh, being a little bit crude at times, but trying to keep it uh, satirical and ironic to the best way possible that grabs your attention. And uh, we understand very well that currently there's so much music around and uh, you have to grab the attention somehow. And uh, we're not ready to be tattooing uh, things on our faces and showing our butts publicly or doing some other not weird yet. things. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Let's show <laughs> so, so what, what we want, what we're trying to do is uh, stand out with, with a different way of writing lyrics, with a different way of composing music, but trying to assemble something different from everything else that we've heard. I'm trying to get money to get a face tat. I really want a big face tat. Dice off. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's that's the short answer. Uh, it was very long, but it, it was short. <laughs> So you mentioned one of the songs that I had written down some notes on. It's track, I think it's track 10 on your album. So I cop the lyrics that I could find, I copied and pasted into Google Translate. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to Google Translate things, but you get very crude, clunky 
translations of whatever you're trying to get translated. So I'm going to ask you about some of these lyrics and then you can clarify or make fun of the bad Google translations and you can tell me if it's accurate or not. Go so ahead. sounds like fun. Um, awesome. sounds like, which was right then? So which, 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 which is the song? Always late. The, the song about being late, there's yeah, a yeah, yeah, in yeah. there that says but this is but like show my caffeine people us being mad cup in fact i don't like a caffeine stimulant i am always late but the vibes is busy but what the big chat there is that's no good bad but subspace but at least immune to death even if i suddenly caught the plague i would miss my own funeral and i was going to ask if number 1 if that's a fairly accurate translation and yeah. the yeah, other yeah, question yeah, yeah. and the other question i was going to ask is is it weird now to sing that lyric of even if i suddenly caught the plague i would miss my own funeral since now we are living in a post pandemic world yeah uh i think that it's important to also note when the song was written it was written during the first lockdown uh that we have oh, okay due to the covid pandemic and that's a direct reference to the time that we we are living in uh and uh, yes it might be uh very satirical uh but at the same time why not why not speak about it in in such a manner and i think when you put it in the context with the song how it sounds how how the lyric is delivered uh it sounds a little bit paradoxical in a sense and uh we like that we like that something sounds happier than it actually is because we believe that uh, positively bringing bad news <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot better than just uh, going and saying that everything has gone to shit and uh, everybody's going to die now. <laughs> it's just not a really good message, is it? I mean, I don't know. It's, again, because I, I, I don't know Latvian, so I don't know how it really comes across when you're singing it in Latvian, when you understand the lyrics directly versus just throwing it into Google Translate. But yeah, I didn't know that you had written it when it had already started. I, I didn't know if you had like already written it and then the pandemic happened and you're like oh sh what did i do <laughs> yeah but that, that was the point this was our first single in latvia like uh, the first one and uh, we had to step out of the borders a little bit so yeah those lyrics were the i think the main thing yeah now, there, there were there were multiple punch lines if yeah, you yeah, call yeah. them but uh yeah this was this was one of the ways uh, how to in a witty way in our opinion talk about uh, that being late can also be a good thing it worked one of your other singles the one that i really like like i kept playing it and actually i got my friend to listen to it because um he was he's actually the reason that i found out about you guys because i don't follow eurovision national selections but he's really into eurovision so we were hanging out in a virtual room like this when the national selections were happening he's like okay go to this link go to this link and then uh, we turned on the Latvian one right in time for you guys to be announced as the winner. And then I like wow. looked you guys up and I went, oh, they seem interesting. And I like Eastern European. So I was like, all right, let me let me see if they'll do an interview just randomly on a whim. <laughs> but uh, I actually sent him Limousine Zuzkrita because I was like, this is a bop. Like, I need him to listen to this. And he was like, oh, yeah, no, this is really good. But one of the lyrics, I like, I, I don't know if this is accurate, where it's saying I see myself with them as delicious as lollipops. And I'm like, what? who who is the lollipop in this scenario? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's our last single that we did in Latvia. That, that's the one that we released with the album. And I think that this is an interesting one. Uh, that line in particular refers to a couple of lines back in the song uh, where I'm talking about uh, me seeing two brunettes, so two ladies by the bar, and they look tasty as lollipops, and I just want to go and uh, check them out. Uh, I guess in, in, in English, if I, if I would say I would like to taste them, that would sound weird. Yeah, but <laughs> but not, not, not in context with our next song in English. <laughs> <laughs> This one, what, what was interesting about the lyric was that uh, we tried writing it in a different way how we've done it be before. Uh, we tried breaking ourselves, and uh, the influence for that was old Latvian music, where the lyrics do not speak about a specific story. They do not tell a specific story. They rather describe a feeling, and that's what we tried doing there. We tried describing the feeling of uh, of just having pure fun 
uh, are with the people that are around you, getting lost in the moment. And uh, yeah, it has been our biggest single in Latvia uh, so far. It's still charting four months later, so we're really happy about that. And uh, uh, so yeah, I, I guess that everybody is kind of uh, missing the good old times when, when, when songs were about more further away things, I guess. Yeah. One of the songs on your album that I was able to find lyrics for, and I had a lot of questions because Google Translate was being really weird. It's a uh, track 13, a uh, parody. I'm not going to say, I'm going to sound real stupid uh, and insult all the Latvians. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, okay. That's a yeah, good so like there's a line in the first verse. <laughs> Don't shake and wipe your mother's milk. That's what Google Translate said. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know what they're trying to say with this. Oh. Google Translate is no okay, help so that, me. That, 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 is a, that is a specific saying in Latvian. That's a specific saying in Latvian. Uh, I don't think that that translates very well. Yeah. So uh, there's a saying in Latvian which says that uh, uh, if you're a beginner in something, if you don't really understand something that well, uh, there's a saying that goes like, uh, which, means, uh, uh, which means exactly what you said, but the meaning behind it is that uh, first you should grow up before you can judge. Uh, so that's what ultimately it means, that you should be separated from your mom before you can be a grown-up man and make decisions on your own. I which guess. is true. <laughs> which is true. <laughs> which is true. Uh, but yeah, I guess th this this really is a phrase that might, might not be transferred yeah, quite well yeah, because yeah. it's an idiom in and out of itself in, in Latvian. Don't shake it. <laughs> and then the the last line in the first verse dramatically turned out weird. It said, <laughs> "I want to taste you." So that afterwards, and it sounds like an incomplete sentence. And I'm like, it is "So that afterwards, <laughs> what?" <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, you wrote you. the sexual no, lyrics. This, this now you have to explain that. that. That's fine. <laughs> so, Parat, uh, just to say, it, 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 it might be one of the naughtiest songs that we've written. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Uh, as well, yeah. Uh, and, and the idea behind this one was uh, we wanted to... Sh so, ultimately, the, our whole album had a concept going through it, and the, the concept was how we felt in the age between 18 and 21 around there when we're kind of teenagers but at the same time grown-ups we can have jobs uh, we try moving in somewhere uh, but it's all very fuzzy because you've just moved out from your parents home and uh, so many things in your life are changing and this was the song where we tried to describe a, a passionate moment uh, in the age and this was a line where uh, the particular line, the, the direct translation would be that uh, I'm going to taste you even even if you're... Yeah, I'm going to taste you. Taste you. In English, it's going to be taste you. I'm going to taste you even if uh, you're uh, on those days of the month. <laughs> that, would be the, that would be the proper way of translating it. But uh, in the context of the lyrics, it just means that you're head over heels somebody and uh no, it's the heat of the moment she, she yeah, has first, 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 first. first i want to taste you so i i get the a burp like a burp after that. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah but i mean it, it basically means the same thing and uh we mean it in the best way possible i guess that uh, we have uh, gotten some comments with eat your salad that we might be uh misogynistic even to some way or, or demeaning to to women. what that's yeah, really, and uh, we we just want to emphasize that once again that you really need to pay attention to the whole context, and we've never said that uh, we are meaning uh, directly what we're saying. Lyrics change in the context, and we do use sexual references because that's how we feel, uh, and 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 that's that's and that's fine, right? It, we are we are slightly immature as well. <laughs> as you can wait, see. Wait. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was not even done asking questions about this song because there's like more lyrics that I was gonna bring up. But now I have to ask about what people are saying to claim that anything about eat your salad is misogynistic. Yeah, uh, well, it's not It's not a lot of Are they offended that you said are. that, are they offended by the opening line? Is that what their issue is? Uh, both the opening line and some parts in the second verse as well. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's something that 
we just really didn't expect coming, uh, and ultimately that's not how we wrote the song. Fuckers. <laughs> 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 No, come on, let me finish. Okay, well, okay. I'm going to let you finish. Okay. <laughs> let you finish. We're not bright. Uh, We're not bright at all, sorry. We're not the smartest band. We are a band. Let's yeah. say that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the idea when we were writing the lyrics was uh, literally to make a, make a comparison between being green and being sexy. And, in order to dis and we didn't want to describe being hot or cute or uh, lovable or whatever. We wanted to describe being sexy. And being sexy implies that you have to use some lines that uh, describe something sexy. And in our opinion, uh, butts are sexy. Yep. Uh, sausages are interpretable as something sexy. And, uh, and pussy, in the end of the day, is something really beautiful. And tasty. And tasty. <laughs> and healthy. So that's good. <laughs> so that's it. And we didn't mean it in a bad way at all. Uh, our, our goal was just to in, interpret it as, as, as satirical humor with a very serious message. So it, it, it's meaningful in, our, in, in, in what we're saying. But at the same time, yeah, if somebody is taking it as, as demeaning towards women, that's not how we meant it. We love women. We love boys. We love dogs. We love cats. Uh, we're, we're, we're just the funky dudes. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> are Latvian people saying that it's misogynistic or are international people saying that it's misogynistic? It was international and in Latvian we also heard some comments about yeah. it, but there we heard comments in the sense that uh, you can translate so, and you're a native speaker, so you can help us with, with in, the interpretation of this one. So the first line in our interpretation is that uh, instead of meat, I veggies and pussy, it's something different from uh, Instead of meat, I eat vegetables and uh, do cunnilingus. I think that that's two completely separate sentences. One is playful, and the other one is literally describing an act. <laughs> and that, that's about it. And uh, in Latvian, we had some, uh, some journalists describing our song as the latter option, uh, which really is not fair, because in Latvian, it's the same. You can say you have, one, you have two words that have the same meaning, but uh, they give a different color to the whole thing and uh, that's what we tried doing there in, in Eat Your Salad. We tried playing with the lyrics. Can we make this sound playful in a way and uh, hopefully hopefully people get it and it seems like they do. It's a major it's a minority that are taking issue with the lyrics but uh, still there is a minority and we want to be very transparent that uh, our intention has never been to be offensive to anybody. Uh, actually our intention has been the completely opposite all the time that uh, in these weird and confusing and really not so great times to bring a little bit of joy in everybody's life uh to bring a little bit of humor something to smile about and uh yeah yeah because to me the the notion of getting offended by that lyric it sounds like number one people with no sense of humor and number two it just sounds like the the never-ending tyranny of puritanical you know values and just that like if you if you study anything to do with how like that whole puritanical concept has been a really aggressive way of censoring art like even in i mean you can see i'm surrounded by movie posters if you study the history of hollywood over the last hundred years like there was the creation of the Hayes code where uh the Hollywood higher ups, they allowed the US government to come in and just terrorize uh, artists and censor them because they were afraid of the rise of communism because they didn't want workers to unionize. And they and they implemented the, the Hayes Code before that uh, as a way of like the the church and other conservative groups like they didn't want, you know, like anything sexual they didn't want like interracial relationships they didn't want any of these things to be shown on screen so like i hear you saying that people are giving you for just like a very silly throwaway line it just really makes me angry <laughs> because like it's, you. Everything <laughs> and, uh, that I, it's everything that i a, hate about there's another the, level the censorship that, of uh, art yeah uh, by the way there was a movie about that recently right about these uh, movie people getting blacklisted. I don't remember the name about it, but I, I'm not sure which movie it is. But I mean, the Hollywood Ten are like the most famous group of artists that were uh, censored. Yeah, but, they were writing yeah, a 
different names, movie scripts, and then releasing them, even though they were blacklisted out of the business, yada, yada, yada. Some time passed, and then they were allowed to release those movies under their names in the end. It was the story went something like that. But yeah, th that was kind of the discussion that we wanted to spark in the context of Eurovision, that the censorship should be applied with caution. And in our case, we don't see that we're saying anything bad. And if you listen to our album in Latvian, we really don't like using any profanities or swear words. Not we, at all. We, we didn't use any in our first album. And in this song, we're using them only once in the whole song. And uh, it, it's in the first line. And we're using it because it's just so damn accurate. It describes the whole song in one sentence. It describes the whole issue that we've been facing for the last, I don't know how many years, in one sentence. And that, that is great. Uh, and uh, our argument towards the Eurovision Song Contest is, uh, so we're okay with showing half-naked butts, uh, over-sexualized performances, uh, God knows what on the screens uh, as the visualizations, but uh, if you say the word pussy, that means that you're auto automatically disqualified. What, what, where's the fairness in that? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I don't know how all of I don't know how the rules get implemented for something like Eurovision because it's a show that gets broadcast to so many different countries, and presumably different countries have different rules. Like, I, if it was just showing domestically, like maybe certain countries would allow your lyric without an issue, and then others might not. So I'm not, I can't really speak to Eurovision specifically, but yeah, just as a as a concept, I, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like the notion of you know, fixating on this one word when it's so obviously just humorous. It's not, it's not even graphic. Like it's just exactly. a throw, it's just a lyric. Like it's not, well, actually I remember when I was younger, you know, when you're kids and you go to, well, I don't know if you, do you have school dances in Latvia? Like, yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, we, do. we would have school dances and sometimes there would be songs, you know, like urban hip hop rap songs that, had you know sexually provocative lyrics but it was really funny looking back on it of which words would get censored and which ones wouldn't because you know words like f or anything like that where it's very commonly known what that word is and that it's a profane word so that would get censored but then there would be slang words that were almost just as graphic or more graphic that would slip through because the people who control the censors they didn't know that that slang so i'm like you're they, they're speaking about ejaculation in this song and it's not being censored at all but you you old people who do these censorship rules you have you have no idea what these words mean so that's why it's just like for, like the yin yang twins are just saying like skeet over and over and over again in this song and it's not being censored at all but, you know, all the other words, it's like, oh, no, but we can't let the kids hear it. It's like, we're hearing plenty. You just, yeah. you can't keep up. So it's kind of I, funny exactly. how that goes. I guess that here, here is a, a, another point to maybe maybe see is that, uh, well, what's what's wrong with the profanities, really? If, if they're used with caution, if they deliver a message, are they still bad words? Uh, I mean, words can hurt and words are a very powerful tool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, context is more important uh, towards a song, and if the context is good, and if the topic is good, uh, then it should be applied more cautiously. That's basically what we're saying. But we're very happy to hear that uh, you're on our side. Yay! <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm not a fan of the, I mean, the HUAC is not around anymore, but the stuff they did in Hollywood, not a fan of that, not a fan of the Hayes Code. I'm not even a fan of the current rating system because they're super hip, hip, uh, hypocritical because they like will censor anything sexual, especially if it's like a woman enjoying herself in a scene. It, and But if a guy is like enjoying himself, it's fine. Like it's not gonna get a high, it's fine, it's whatever. Um, but like if it's super violent, like, oh, you can get a PG-13 rating, but if it's anything to do with sex, then it's like, oh, R-rated, which is higher. It's better so. to fight at schools than to make love. That's the messaging that we're giving across there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the U.S. is the epicenter of the military-industrial complex, and they do nothing but manufacture reasons to go to war. So I, it's, it's so that they can make money. So, like, I'm not surprised that they're fine with brainwashing people to be okay with violence, especially when it's happening to people outside of the United States. So I'm not surprised at all by any of that. Um, so uh, I did want to ask, though, because I heard you mention in another interview that 
So your song is about going green and living a green lifestyle, but you were saying that you don't consider yourselves super aggressive about those beliefs or whatever. Like, I think you use the expression, oh, we're not going to chain ourselves to trees or anything like that. Um, but I did kind of want to uh, question a little bit deeper about that because I, I'm not really sure where your uh, stance is in regards to environmentalism, because like there's a really great expression. I think I wrote it down in my notes um, about how, oh God, where was it? Oh yeah, it was environmentalism without class struggle is just gardening. It's a quote by this uh, Brazilian revolutionary named Chico Mendes. And, you know, it's just, it's elaborating on the fact that like, the way that that can be applied today is that all of us as individuals, if we try to, you know, use our eco-friendly, like reusable grocery bags and stuff like that and recycle, like, yeah, that's great. But then you have companies like Chevron that are dumping 16 billion uh, gallons of toxic waste into the Amazon forest in Ecuador and poisoning the indigenous people. Like none of us can stop that on an individual basis unless we like all rise up. So like, I, I'm kind of curious as to like, do you actually believe that the superficial, like just daily stuff is enough to like fix climate change? Or was it just, you um, were just trying to keep it simple because enough. of- Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not enough. And uh, this is a great question. And uh, of course, that larger change needs to happen in order for anything of what we do to be efficient. But at the same time, uh, we were very cautious about how we wrote the song. And uh, there are some things that I don't think that are noticeable, but uh, we can try to explain them. Firstly, we didn't use active voice in the sense that you should go and do something. Uh, no, it's a personal decision. In our opinion, everybody should do what they can. Secondly, we tried positive reimbursement instead of a negative one. So instead of saying that uh, the ice is melting and the world is dying, uh, we're saying that being green is sexy uh, and that it's cool and that uh, you can be a part of it too, yada, 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 right? And uh, thirdly, it's about the mood of the song, that we wanted it to be fun and uplifting. And the reason behind this is that Companies are still made up of people, and uh, families are made up of people, and ultimately pop music is being uh, used or contributed, or, I don't know, consumed by people. And uh, if you feel good about something, if something makes you feel great about yourself, feel, in our case, sexy about yourself or just cooler uh, about yourself, then you probably will subconsciously think about it at, at one point or another in your life. And uh, we just see that uh, a messaging where you're told to do something that you have to be a part of this, you have to make a change, doesn't necessarily work. Uh, it sometimes even causes the opposite reaction. Uh, it has to be our decision. And ultimately, if, uh, as you say, if uh, one or another larger company uh, gets a bunch of people that have listened to each your salad and that think it's a bop, uh, in, in, the, in the board of the company at one point in the future, uh, I think that they will make changes because they will feel good about them. Uh, and that's, that's how we want it to be different in, in a sense that uh, we didn't write the song with the idea of just the promoting a greener lifestyle and that you should stop eating meat. That, that's not the point of the song. The point of the song is that you can be a better person if you want to. And uh, we are really endorsing that, that you will be sexier in our eyes if, uh, if you try to go green or at least do something about, about it. And for us, I mean, we're, we're not the greatest role models of uh, green, green people, uh, not at all. Uh, there's still things that we could improve on. And but the know. main thing is, that, yeah, exactly. And we will try to do that. And that's what the song is about. It's about trying to become a better version of yourself. Uh, instead of being the best version of yourself or feeling bad about that you're not the best version of yourself. It's about aspiring towards something. And uh, yeah, it's a one small step for man. A one huge step for the humanity. Mankind. Mankind, sorry. Yeah, that's great. But all the good ones. I was going to ask if you had any plans to try to name drop some of the larger things that need attention when you're about to embark on like you're going to be doing so many interviews at Eurovision so I wasn't sure if you were gonna you know jot down a couple of the 
laundry list of environmental crises and situations that could use a bit of publicity and like boosting because obviously you're not going to do that on the stage because it's not in the song if you're talking to like a big television network in whatever country that's interviewing you i'm not telling you what to do i'm just saying it's like yeah, it's for, something from you our consider. Side, the idea is uh, we understand that with the attention that we've been given now it's uh, it's a massive responsibility uh and uh, we have maybe a slightly unorthodox uh way of, of bringing attention to things that we think are important and uh, that's some that's a project that we're working on right now uh, in parallel to preparing to your vision. As I said, we're not the best guys to be carrying uh, a very serious environmental issue or deep diving into it. Uh, we're musicians, right? We, we do what we do best. It's write songs <laughs> and, and, and try to be better versions of ourselves. But there are a lot of people out there that have spent their lives uh, towards uh, working for a better future and paying attention to these issues. We're not the best uh, voices for, for voicing in depth challenges and issues that we could be paying attention towards. So another project that we're working on in parallel uh, actually does that for us. And uh, we are inviting people uh, that have been spending their lives towards researching this yeah, and understanding sure. where the underlying uh, challenges are or how we can improve ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we'll be doing fun interviews with them. Uh, in our quirky way, uh, the same as we're writing lyrics, we're not gonna we're, we're gonna try to do it in an on standard format, uh, in a weird format. But at the same time, uh, we're given the attention, and we want to transfer it to somebody who really needs it. So that's that's how we see our role in all of this. Yeah, because I was gonna say, I mean, like if you need suggestions, like if you can uh, talk about Stephen Donziger, the the human rights lawyer that won the multi-billion dollar lawsuit against Chevron and Chevron refuses to pay what they owe to the indigenous people in Ecuador whom they poisoned because they dumped all that toxic waste. Or you could talk about uh, the Red Hill military base in occupied Hawaii, which is contaminating the drinking water. And like indigenous Hawaiians have been telling them to leave and to go away for so long and no one listens. And, uh, and now like, the drinking water is poisoned. They've been uh, ordered to shut down and to defuel and they're refusing to do it. Oh, and the, if you didn't know this already, I'll just tell you, uh, the US military is the number one source of pollution in the entire world. If you wanna read up on any of those things when you have time and you wanna plug them when you're doing interviews, it's just not telling you what to do, just a friendly suggestion. Can I ask you, since we're running out of time, can I ask you about some more of your song lyrics? Yeah, go ahead. It's back to that other song that I was asking about earlier, a uh, par parody. Oh, no, yeah. 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 <laughs> There's a lyric that says, like the fifth lilac leaf, others do not search or read at all. That's not a correct translation. Yeah. There's not a line about lilacs uh, in the song. I'm thinking which song is. Uh, no, it's not which lyric is it? Uh, yeah, about flowers. We have something about flowers there, but not about lilacs. We'll discuss it. Uh, oh, yeah. Fifth, uh... Just the moment. Just the yeah, moment. Yeah, we're talking about... Just the moment. Just the moment. Yeah, just the moment. 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 Yeah, it's a pint. It's a, it's just that. So the reference there is that usually you in in Latvia they sell beer in half a liter uh, containers, and then there are pint yeah. uh, containers, which is zero point six eight, eight it's seven. More. It's more. Yeah, so it's it's, a, more, it's yeah. just a little bit more beer. But the the idea behind that line is that. You are like a pint, a little bit more than I expected. <laughs> and then uh, also in the second verse, there's a lyric that says, <laughs> It says, um, maybe I'm like a brother to you because uh, yeah. you're like a <laughs> sister to me. <laughs> yep, uh, is that the, basically it's about being friends on. Maybe you see me as a brother rather than a lover. <laughs> that's, that's what it says. Because yeah. <laughs> it doesn't translate very well in Google Translate. It sounds like you're 
I don't know. There's some incesty thing happening here. Oh, no, 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 no,
pop music in Russian. We we listen to it actually. Yeah, I'm quite a lot. Yeah, there are some great artists uh, in 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 the Russian music industry, especially pop, especially the new artists that are out there. I think one of our all-time favorites is Antoka MC. Yeah, he's a trumpet player that sings in this very quirky way, very jazzy, very funky, very disco, uh, weird, but in a really good way, I guess. Uh, then there's also Ivan Dorn yeah. as well. Uh, he's a Ukrainian descent artist that also sings in Russian. I like Miyagi. They are Miyagi as well. It's awesome. I, I think that the music there, what, what's developing, is it's pretty unique. In, in a way, uh, at least how we see it. We, we listen to Western pop music and then we listen to Russian pop music and uh, there are some similarities, but ultimately they're pretty different uh, at the same time. And that's that's cool that we're in the middle of this and that we get to experience both and uh, incorporate that maybe in our music as well. I just think that Eastern Europeans in general, from what I've noticed from just skimming the pop music from different countries in the post-Soviet bloc, they understand that more is more because like i hate when people say less is more about pop because it's like that's literally not what the word means and please stop saying that i'm so tired of hearing boring people complain about their love lives like i don't know you i don't care about your breakup don't sing to me about it like i wouldn't <laughs> yeah. like i don't care if you're gonna sing a sad song i want it in a movie because then it's like I'm seeing the full story play out and I'm invested in the narrative. But if it's just a song, just playing as a song, I want like up tempo, big, loud production. You know, like there's a, there's a song called Kachuya Basa by um, Alina Grosu. That song is a f- bop. Like when it gets to the chorus and she says like Kachuya Basa and then like the beat kicks in, I just like f- lose my mind every time I hear it because it's so good and it was hilarious because actually my friend the one who got me to know about you guys we didn't even know that we both love that song like we just randomly like I forget which one of us brought it up and I was like wait why do you know that I love that song so yeah (laughs) and I didn't even know that it meant I want bass I like google translated it super recently I was like oh that's what she's saying I was like oh well I agree like I was so (laughs) wrong about it yeah so uh when it comes to your stuff it was like the more up tempo like the bigger the louder i was like yeah that's why like limousine discreet that like i get i kept playing that on a loop i was like yeah i don't know what they're saying but yeah (laughs) i think that that was the goal as well i mean uh the lyric there might be the most i don't know weirdest of them all it doesn't make sense at times it just describes a feeling and if you get the feeling of yeah that's the feeling that we were going for. That's 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 exactly what we wanted to get out of it. So awesome, music without borders. That's great. I know that I have to let you get going because you have other stuff to do after this. But I did want to ask: Have you shot a video for Eat Your Salad yet? A music video? No, uh, that's something that we're working on pretty hard at the moment. Uh, we have a scenario written down. Now we're arranging all the technical parts to it. Uh, the team, I guess, has been assembled already, so that's nice. And uh, if everything goes according to plan A, it's going to be the best music video of Eurovision this year. And uh, I'm, I don't use words like such. Uh, I use them with caution yeah. usually, but if everything goes with plan A, uh, it's going to be it's going to be legendary. It's really going to be legendary. Yeah. Like, we're, we're extremely we're excited get, ourselves. It will be huge. Yeah. Huge. Uh, because yeah, we, we will have some guests and, uh, hopefully, hopefully everything pans out and, uh, yeah, then it's going to be a talking point. The same as the song. We wanted to have, uh, the video as well as a talking point. We wanted to spark discussion. So yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And I think, um, you are probably one of the strong, co- I mean, we haven't heard all of the songs yet. Uh, I don't think everyone has chosen their entries yet. But I think that you're uh, a strong contender to become the favorite of, I don't know if you know who Jack Whitehall is, but he's this British comedian and he loves Eurovision. So like- We love him, I watch his shows. (laughs) Yeah, so I was like thinking about this because sometimes I like, for my friends who are really into Eurovision, sometimes I'll ask them, you know, when the lineup is being built, I'm like, okay, so which one do you think Jack Whitehall is gonna stand this year? You know, and uh, like, I think now it's, I haven't heard all of the songs, so like I'm not the right person to make this judgment. But now I would guess that it would be between you 
a Norway song because that one is like goofy and has a concept as yeah. well. So and like I don't know, maybe you you the two should uh, meet up like you and Norway's act. You know the food centric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will meet them. We will meet them in the Eurovision pre parties and 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 the all around the place. I guess that in, in April, that in late March and the beginning of April, that's when the crazy part starts. That's when we will have to befriend all the 42 other countries that are participating and right. their participants. And uh, we're hyped about that. Mm -hmm. As I said, we've never been outside of Latvia. We've never been la outside of Latvia. <laughs> Wait, was, were you being serious? You've never traveled outside of Latvia? As a band, no. We have traveled a lot individually, but not as a band, yeah. Oh, okay, 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 then that's completely As a band, we haven't been given the stamp of approval for exports yeah. up until now. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, now I No, it's, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, you know, thank you so much, guys, for taking time to chat with me. Thank you for this. I guess that this was really cool. Yeah, uh, this was a cool one, yeah. This was a really cool interview. This was uh, different from what we've done before, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I wasn't too aggressive. No, it was great. No. It was great. You can be honest. <laughs> uh, for, for real, yeah. It was good. Uh, Amazing. Uh, <laughs> Exquisite. Marvelous. <laughs> Sconkers. Sconkers. Wait, wait, wait. I forgot one last thing because it's a short one. Robert, how tall are you? Over two meters. That's been, you know, a talking point online. So I was like, let me get it on the record, you know, because everyone is asking for science. I'm we sure can, that's uh, the reason. We next to each other, John and me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's like not that. even yeah. in frame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is how it looks. I'm, I'm average size. Yeah, it like, is I'm like, average height. It's like one meter thirteen. So. Yeah, for when I'm for, when I'm buying clothing, I'm either a medium man or a large woman. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was like a talking point when you guys were performing and then the, all of you were standing together and you just have Robert just towering over everyone. <laughs> In red suit, yeah, that would be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> cheers. Bye! <laughs>